So let's make sure that you can see my screen moving. And you can. Um, so uh, Starweaver is an education company, professional education, focused on um, a variety of sectors. We work with very large companies around the world. Largely, we don't um, sell, that is to say, to consumers. But we do have programs that are oriented towards professionals in all sorts of institutions. You'll see a lot of fintech type of organizations, but also uh, government agencies and oil and gas companies and service providers, et cetera. The focus of our business is leading edge IT, enterprise IT, project management, finance and banking, business skills. Um, the finance and banking part is very much esoteric finance, essentially derivatives, capital structure, corporate finance. And the other categories are what you might expect. I believe we would put this into the leading IT area because it does cut on a lot of the um, big data issues that are facing us today. Uh, we have a lot of courses. Uh, a lot of what we do is um, live and in person, like this, uh, in person online or in person in person in a workshop. We also have a library of uh, hundreds of courses. Again, this is available online. Uh, and in person, uh, and you can see our professionals. Um, if you are interested in individual courses, go to Glo go to Star Weaver Institute. You'll see a variety of programs. We have one going on right now, which is the Cyber Warrior Certification for Seven Part Series. It's free, and I highly recommend it. Again, uh, we have webinars on a regular basis. You'll see there are uh, topics like the one uh, we're doing uh, now. Um, you'll see the others are on. Um, other related topics on the world of Java FX, virtual reality and business strategies, TOGAF frameworks, and this again has some cyber warrior components. Again, go to our website, you'll find this information available. Again, thank you for your participation today. By doing this and uh, giving us a little feedback, you'll get access to one of um, about uh, 17 different courses. Just take your choice. All you have to do is click on the link here or go in the right chat box. You'll see Rand has been so kind as to share that link. Click on it afterwards. You'll get a link also afterwards. And just fill that out. Choose which course you would like to take. Um, Ian will tell you a little about himself, but this is a visual anyway, so you know who, you're t um, who is your presenter. Um, this is someone who, um, based in South Africa, has been basically a world traveler and understands this Power BI world pretty much better than anyone we know. And we're really pleased to have him. Um, if you need help, contact us at um, any of these emails or phone numbers. Uh, you can also go to um, helpdesk at starweaver.com. That's my brief presentation. I'm Paul Siegel again. I'm going to pass this off to Ian so that he can get back on and um, uh, jump into the presentation. Hopefully, we'll make this uh, seamless. I'll hopefully pass it off to Ian. OK, great. Uh, thank you very much, Paul. Um, can you hear me? We can hear you. I just wanted to make can you a presenter. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> okay, fantastic. As, I said, as long as it's coming through. And thank you very much for that. Thanks for the introduction. Um, I'm just going to then just uh, see if we can just move on to the presentation. Has the uh, presentation come up? Might just be, has that come up now? From Excel to Power BI? Uh, I've not seen anything. Rand? Okay, um, did you pass across the, um, yep. just the sharing? Yeah, oh, there we the go. Presenter. Okay, perfect, should work now. Okay, I think that this should uh, be coming up. There you go, there you go. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's great to be online. Uh, well, actually, it's uh, early evening for us in South Africa, and uh, obviously the technology side of things uh, allows us to communicate with people around the world, and uh, so it's fantastic to be able to um, talk a little bit about Power BI and also just, you know, the whole topic about from Excel to Power BI, where where we are, where we're sitting, where's this come from and where is it going to? I think it's quite an interesting topic for any business user around the world. Just a quick introduction about myself. Um, so my name's Ian Little John. Um, I spent many years as a management consultant helping companies be able to um, analyze and understand their business and really uh, created many thousands of impressive spreadsheets during that time. Um, but the problem was the spreadsheets took a long time to put together. They uh, take a lot of time to actually crunch the numbers and put them together. So really we're looking for sort of better tools that are able to help us get insights and intelligence from our data. And that's really what we've been working on for the last number of years. And really ever since Excel launched uh, the Power Pivot back in uh, Excel 2010, we've been working a lot with the Excel products, understanding how these products can really help people to be able to 
better understand their business, better understand their data. And I think that we're looking at it really a very uh, great set of products that Microsoft are putting together. But one thing I'd like to say to anybody that is using these products is that it's really an evolution. Uh, we are really seeing a lot of new functionality come into the products on an almost monthly basis. So it, it's something that you, as you sort of move into, uh, you'll sort of see that it, it does evolve and, and, and does um, give us a great amount of new functionality all the time. So it's always exciting. It's always uh, great to see what's actually been doing. So we've been focusing on really just training users on how to use these these products. And we call it Excel Business Intelligence. And um, yeah, so we run a number of different training courses just to, to help people be able to move through that. So let's just maybe chat about a little bit about uh, Excel and Power BI. And um, you know, if we look at uh, the stats, are all kind of different. Uh, some stats say 600 million Excel users, others say 800 million. Some have actually even said a billion Excel users out there. So we really believe that less than 1% of people really know how to use the most powerful features within Excel. And that's really what we want to focus on is, uh, we always say if you're working with spreadsheets, you're doing the work for Excel. Um, you're putting in the formulas, you're putting in the tables. As once you start working with pivot tables, power pivot, power view, you really get to Excel to do the work for you in terms of that. Okay, so just uh, sort of moving on, let's uh, just maybe chat a little bit of where Power BI has come from and what Excel strategy has really been around this area of business intelligence. Obviously, business intelligence has been around for a long time, uh, 30 odd years probably at least. And normally it's in the technical side of things that uh, business intelligence has really sort of grown. They create data warehouses, they have SQL servers, they, you know, and, and every time that business users needed to put together reports or dashboards, they tended to need to go to the IT people and, and to get that. And obviously a frustration kind of built around that if those people needed to get their data faster, to be able to move into the insight and, and intelligence quicker, and really to be able to understand and analyze their, their data. So we saw around the sort of mid-2000s, Microsoft started working on some new projects. And um, these projects evolved into what became Power Pivot, Power Query, and Power View. Uh, there's also a Power Map as well that has become an add-on for, for Excel if you, if you know the Power Tool products. And uh, what we really saw was Microsoft taking business intelligence and moving it from the technical side of things to across to what I would say is the business side. So people who could work with Excel now got access to technologies that really were only in the hands of technical people before, or you had to have technical skills to work with them. So we're going to talk a little bit more about these technologies and, and sort of where they come to, because it's very important to understand Power BI from the fact that it's actually evolved from Excel technologies. So just to give you a quick little overview of, of the different technologies. So the first one there, Power Pivot. Power Pivot is really a database add-on that's in Excel. And uh, it can handle millions of rows of records, tens of millions of rows, hundreds of millions. It depends on your uh, machine, how much power you've got behind it. But certainly for a normal consumer grade type of uh, laptop these days, we can work with millions of rows of, of records. It also allows us to create relationships between our tables. So we can actually use multiple tables in our reports now. We don't need to just use one table like we could with uh, pivot tables. But pivot tables tended to still be your way of producing a report. So Power Pivot, very good at the fact of data modeling and allows us to create great, uh, great data model. And one of the big things that Power Pivot brought us as well is something called DAX. DAX is, uh, stands for Data Analysis Expressions. And it's a new formula language that we've really built around the fact of business intelligence type of queries. However, it uses the Excel formula language and a large proportion of it. So as an Excel user, I always say to people, as you move across into Power Pivot, the learning curve is actually quite nice because you're not starting to learn a whole new language. You can use your Excel knowledge, and there's a huge amount of formulas you can use straight out the box to get work done that you're used to working with in Excel. So the way of working is still very, very much the same as, as, as Excel. But we start to find that we do have a lot more um, expressions that we can use that uh, uh, give us high aggregation type of calculations. So that's very important for those of you who work with large amounts of data, want to crunch large amount of data. Power Pivot really gives you that, uh, that ability. Then we had Power Query. Uh, Power Query is really for anybody who imports data into Excel and then 
uh, has to then do the data analysis. Now, if you've imported data into Excel from CSV files, you often know that we don't get the data types right. We uh, doesn't see date data types correctly, or the numbers are wrong, or we need to clean things up. We need to remove errors, and there's a huge amount of different transformations that we might want to perform on our data. And I've got to say, Power Query is really amazing at the fact of the, the ability to do this. And it works like a macro because you actually set a set of steps that happens to your data. So as you set the steps, you set transformations, you change data types, you maybe do replaces. Um, for example, you may have your data that it says M, and it stands for gender for male. And we can do a replace and say, no, M means male. And then every time you refresh your data, M will come in as male, and obviously we could set F to female and things like that. So there's a, a lot of different things, but one of the most powerful things in Power Query as well is the ability to merge tables. So if you're used to working with your data analysis, you'll often find that working with one table can be quite, quite nice, because it's much easier to reconcile your data. So you'll see the Power Query allows us to merge different data sources together. And this is really like a VLOOKUP on steroids, really, in terms of, of what we're doing with this. So as I said, Power Query is really a, a fantastic uh, tool for any, any type of extraction, transformation, and loading of data that you do. We call it ETL in the business intelligence world. Then we have Power View. Power View was introduced with Excel 2013. And Power View gave us a canvas, like a sheet of paper that you could then drop uh, tables onto, you could drop uh, graphs onto, and then you would find that these were could filter each other. So graphs could filter each other graphs, and we could have uh, slices on there. And we, we started to get a lot of enormously powerful um, ability to filter data. So PowerView really gave us the ability to start building very quick interactive dashboards as well. So these three products in the main, uh, what happened with the history of Power BI, our first versions was uh, Microsoft actually created um, the ability to share the Excel spreadsheets in SharePoint. So basically, you created a Power BI sharing within SharePoint, and you could share your information within the, the SharePoint infrastructure. It also ran on proprietary technology, Silverlight, Microsoft Silverlight to run it. Now, this caused quite a problem within anybody using this, where you want to use it kind of outside of Microsoft proprietary technologies. And they made a decision to actually rebuild, but to rebuild with open standards and to use HTML5 as the basis for the fact of Power BI. So Power BI was actually built from the ground up again, but this time what they did was they built a cloud version. So there's a powerbi.com uh, where you can go to, and you can actually load your data source in there. You can do some of the things that I'm going to show you today. You can create your report, and then you can share your report. You can share it with users within your company, users outside of your company, and they'll get access to your dashboards and, and online information, and very, very powerful. But what they also did was they built a Power BI desktop. Now, the Power BI desktop is an application you download. Again, it's free, free to download. You can download it from powerbi.com. But this gives us more um, data modeling capabilities. We can create our own formulas. So it really allows us just to, to have a little bit more strength in the fact of putting together our dashboards and data analysis. So Power BI, with the new, um, new way forward in terms of cloud and the desktop view, went into a preview for about a year. And then about uh, almost two years ago now, it went into general release. Uh, it was about July two years ago. So the generally available Power BI, what started happening was that they did monthly updates on Power BI. And we started seeing a huge amount of new functionality coming in, especially in the uh, well, early days of, of new um, abilities within Power BI. And we still see every month, I think everybody waits for the new release to come out to see what functionality Microsoft is going to give us. And there's been some really, really great stuff that's, that's come into this. But some of the really uh, cool things that um, they've also done, um, and, and one of them that's so important is the ability for open source visualizations. So within Power BI, you can actually go to the Power BI Visual Gallery, and you can then uh, download other visualizations, integrate them into your Power BI interface, and basically out of the box, they integrate within your dashboards, within your data analysis. And then for those of you as well who may be familiar with R, They've also integrated with the R Studio and allow you to do your R um, data analysis through the Power BI interface. So I think from a traditional point of view, Microsoft used to keep the technology very close to the chest and normally keep it within the Microsoft side. Power BI, I think, is really the first time that we're starting to see Microsoft really open up uh, hugely to the open source 
uh, environment in terms of visualizations, integration with R, and um, just generally, I think that they they interface a lot with the customers through forums. The they've got an ideas uh, area within the within the Power BI community as well, which they use hugely to generate um, the the, uh, the new features and what should be focused on. So, kind of quite a different way that Microsoft's working with Power BI versus some of the traditional ways that they've worked. Okay, so that's just a bit of history of Power BI. So Power BI has really come about as a result of the fact of Power Pivot, Power Query, Power View within Excel, taking it out, putting it into its own infrastructure, and uh, and and really building around that. However, what they are doing is they're building it the back, the links back into Excel. So we can actually move between Power BI and Excel uh, with information and and the ability to analyze information. I'll speak a bit more about that. Okay, so what we're going to do. Um, is uh, just why would you want to move from Excel to Power BI? What is what is uh, the reason? And I, I wouldn't advocate to anybody necessarily that you're going to just put Excel away. Excel is an incredible product. It's, it's enormously powerful in terms of the analysis and reports and structures that it that it runs within the company. So we're certainly not saying that Excel is going to go away and Power BI is going to take over. So Power BI I really see as an addition, as an extension uh, to your Excel analysis. But what you're going to really find within Power BI is definitely the, the dashboard side of things is, is extremely powerful. Interactive dashboards in minutes, as we say here, the ability to drag, drop, see your data. But also because of the fact that we now get access to new types of visualizations and the integration with R and things like that, is the ability to actually take our um, visual and data analysis to the next step. So we are able to um, really get more advanced in, in terms of the, the fact of understanding our data and, and getting into, into that data. Also, another thing that's very powerful, because Power BI is, is cloud-based, it fits into the Azure um, infrastructure, into the Azure ecosystem. So what Microsoft now has started doing is, for example, if you use Azure ML, the Azure machine learning uh, capabilities, you can build bot models within Azure ML, and then you can visualize them through Power BI create interactive dashboards using the Power BI interface. New ones that they've just brought out now is uh, Microsoft Flow. So Microsoft Flow really runs on uh, if this, then that type of logic. So you can set up triggers and actions. So within your Power BI, you could have um, reports that have been um, monitored. And if something happens, you could trigger off an email. You know, it's gone over a certain setting and things like that. Now, these are still quite early days for Microsoft in terms of some of these um, systems. So it's really going to take just a little bit of, I would say, playing around, prototyping. I always say to all my customers, um, you know, please, please just pilot and prototype this first. Don't think you're going to roll it out enterprise-wide overnight. Um, start in your team, start in your departments, allow people to, to really just experiment with it, get it up and running. Um, but, you know, do it a little bit by little bit. Um, but, you know, over time, you'll quickly find that you do get to information that is worth uh, sharing and is worth putting out there. But your process structures and systems will sort of really start to develop around how best to manage this because obviously a lot of information now is being easily uh, communicated through the, with the people within your organization. So it really is a new way to, to do that. And, and, and really talking about that, we move on to the mobile aspect. And this is uh, really exciting from, from Microsoft is the integration into Android, Apple, and obviously Windows. So not just can you uh, log into the internet here and see your reports, you can have them on your Android phone, you can have them on your Android tablet, you can have them on your Apple uh, iPad or your Apple, I uh, believe it's even on Apple Watch. Only certain visualizations would obviously show, but still, um, the ability to, to have mobility, and especially if you're having sort of um, data that has been refreshed quite regularly, um, the ability to have this real-time real type of data available to, to companies is a, a massive competitive advantage uh, versus companies that don't, for example. So as we mentioned, we have the integration of R, we have the ability to integrate with other Azure services, and um, that really allows this ecosystem to build up. Uh, just another point, um, I know if you're an Excel user out there, uh, if you start working with Lodger, uh, sets of data, you may well find that, that Excel uh, struggles with your memory, and that's because you're normally running on a 32-bit Excel. Uh, so one of the nice things about Power BI is it's 64-bit processing, so you can actually run it on your 64-bit operating system, and we get access to obviously far better memory management and, and bigger data sets that we can work with, so just working with, uh, with that.
Okay, what I'm going to just uh, show now, um, this is just a dashboard uh, that I've put together. And um, I'm going to go across now into Power BI, and I'm just going to talk about a little bit about the, the structure of the dashboard, some of the, um, some of the graphs and things that we've done, and um, just give you an idea how we drag and drop, how we put something like this together. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a demo now, just showing you some of these, the, these aspects. Okay. Right, so let's just move across here. Okay, so I've moved into my Power BI interface. I hope everybody can, uh, can see this clearly. And uh, basically what we've got here is just on my right-hand side, I've brought two sets of data into this. So I've got an employee master data over here. And in this is my traditional, I've got a list of people's names. I've got an employee ID, what gender they are, their job grade, length of service they've been with us, marital status, race, salary, uh, age, you know, and which department they're part of. So then, you know, sort of traditional master type data that you would have within your, within your company. And then over here we've got some workshop data. So this is people who have been on training and uh, we record the employee ID, when they went on the training, what the course name was, which is obviously linked to a course code, a cost, and a supplier. So this gives us the information of sort of um, just uh, the costs and everything for the employee IDs. Now within um, Power BI, uh, we can create relationships between different data sets. So you'll see over here now we have our master and we have our workshop data over here. And you'll see that we've done a relationship, if we go on relationship, we've done it between our employee ID. So I've got the employee ID in the workshop and I've got the employee ID in the master. And it's a many to one relationship. So this would normally be the type of thing you would do with a VLOOKUP. You'd be looking up information from the master to go into the workshop. So in this case, we've just got a relationship. Over here, we also have our data set. So this basically just gives us our data set over here. And we're able to, over here, create sort of custom fields if we wanted to in terms of dealing with the, the data that we wanted to do. So let's say, for example, I've got my start date over here. And uh, I've got my year and month over here. But for instance, let's say I wanted to know, OK, it tells me over here it's a Thursday. But I wanted Thursday just to be in over its own field because I wanted to analyze, let's say, how many people go on, on, on course on a Monday versus a Tuesday versus a Wednesday versus a Thursday versus a Friday, for example. So I just wanted to do some analysis. So what do we do in Power BI over here is we've got a modeling tab. Now over here, because I want to produce a result and I want to be able to now produce this result for each um, row, I'm actually going to create a new column over here. Now, those of you who are familiar with the fact of Power Pivot, we're basically doing the same thing over here. So for this time around, instead of naming the column over here, we're going to do the name as part of it. So let's say, for example, we want to call this weekday name. I'm going to say equals format. And we're going to take our value over here. And what we're going to say is we want to see our start date. And we're now going to convert this into a long version of our day name. Now again, as I say, if, you, if you're familiar with Excel, you'll see that the syntax is the same. We're bringing in, instead of A1, B1 as cell references, we always use field names. But instead of using equals text, which is what we would use in, in Excel, we use an equals format command. So it's very much the same. Hopefully you want to press enter now. Should see that uh, we should get our weekday name now being recorded in its own field. So this is the first type of calculation we can do. And as you can see, it's very easy. The second type of calculation is, let's say, for example, now I've got my total salary over here, and I've got my number of employees that are within my database. So what we want to do now is we want to create an aggregate. We want to sum up our salary. So I always explain this to people in my courses to say, if you take an Excel spreadsheet and you now um, look at, and you've got 200 rows, if you do an equal sum at the bottom of it, you've got one cell now that has the total for that entire row, uh, that entire column of data. And this is really what happens when we create a new measure. The new measure becomes one cell that is holding the aggregate result of the entire calculation. So let's just show a couple of examples over here. So we're going to create a new measure. And let's just move to our master table. Okay, 
let's just do that again. New measure. Okay, so you can see a new measure is created over here. It gives me the name. And what I'm going to call this one is I'm going to say, I just want to know what my total salary is. So again, using a Excel type logic, I'm going to just say total salary is equal to the sum. And in this case, I'm going to use my master and my salary. And that's really as easy as, as it is. In this case, if I want to format it, give it 1,000 separator, and have no decimal places on this one, and it's going to be linked to the master table. And you'll see now that over here, I have a, a new total salary um, measure that is in place. So that's great. That was easy enough to put together. Uh, maybe I might want another one. And what it's going to do is it's going to add up and it's going to tell me how many employees I've got. So I'm going to say now, I'm going to create another measure. So in this case, we're going to say it's called number of employees. And in this case, we're going to do what's called the distinct count. Now, one of the great things about Power Pivot is the DAX language gives us the ability to do a distinct count. And what that means is it will go through a list of um, a list of items, and it will only put, put, uh, pull out each distinct item and then count that. So if we look at this department over here, we've got duplicate copies of sales sales. When it counts this, it will only count sales once. So this is really important for the fact of a lot of analysis that we do, because we often only want a distinct count. We want to know how many departments we've got, for example. In this case, we're going to distinct count our employee name. We want to know how many employees we've got. Again now, we have number of employees. And you'll see over here now at the number of employees, I've got my total salary. One of the great things about DAX now is that because I've got this measured total salary and I've got the number of employees, if I wanted to know what is my average salary for each of my employees, I can now take my total salary divided by the number of employees. And this would be pretty much exactly the same as you taking your Excel and going, okay, take A1 divided by B1 and you get your result of the aggregate functions. So in this case, we're going to say, you measure again. Okay, so we're going to call this one average salary equals. And we're going to say, in this case, we want to divide. And we're going to take now our total salary and we're going to divide it by our number of employees. And again, DAX has got a, 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 a formula called equals divide, which Excel doesn't do. What happens here is it handles the divide by zero or the divide by null error that you'll get within Excel. So if you get divide by error, uh, divide by zero error, it actually just puts zero as the response. So it's actually a, a much better way of dealing with your um, your errors that you can get. So again, now we get an average salary now divides total salary by number of. And hopefully you can see now by just using these, these functions very quickly, you're building up a data model with all these new fields, but so far we haven't used anything more uh, sophisticated than really a um, using uh, Excel type functions. What we could do though is we could take it a little bit further. And for example, if you wanted to know how many employees I've got say in one department, now we could use another new feature in DAX called the equals calculate. So I'm going to just show you one quick little option over here called new measure again. And this time we're going to say number of employees in sales. This time we're going to say equals calculate. This time I was, let's say I want to calculate the number of employees, comma, but in this situation, I'm not going to go to my master table, and I'm going to say when the department equals sales. And really, you can see that this is like a supercharged sort of sum if type statement. So we could actually do sums in here. We could do divides. We could do uh, distinct counts. You can do sort of any form of aggregation here. So the calculate function is really a great function uh, for your data analysis. It takes you to really the next level. Okay, so let's just see the results of, of this if we were to put this now into our report over here. So I'm going to go back to my report. I'm going to come back to this one a bit just now. What I'm going to do for now is just actually create a new page. And let's say, for example, now I just wanted to see gender. I'm going to just drag gender on here. I've got my male, female. And let's say, for example, I was interested to know what is total salary? What is my average salary? You can see I'm just now taking these new functions that I've done. 
and it does the calculation. And now if I use that new one that I've done, uh, number of employees in sales, now out of the male and female, it would tell me how many employees are in sales because we're doing a filter on that actual calculation over here. So you can see by default what actually happens is we create a table visualization within Power BI. But very easily you can change these to other forms of visualizations. I'm going to show you a couple of examples of that just now. And again, I could actually take number of employees. And you can see we're building up our tables by just dragging and dropping. So what you tend to find in, in Power BI or Power Pivot even is that you spend a bit of time getting your data model right. Once you've got your formulas and everything right, the part of actually putting together your dashboard as such or your data analysis is far, far easier because we're just using drag and drop type interface to, to put this together. Okay, so that's just an example of a table. And um, once you've got a table, by the way, what you'll see is you get different sort of formatting options over here. And for example, you can apply styles and different types. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but you can format it. And I'll, I'll go through a couple of the different formatting options that you can use on some of the other items. The next one we're going to look at is over here. Again, we've got different types of visualization. So over here, we've got what's called the card visualization. So cards are particularly great when you want to show a total aggregate or you want to show a key performance indicator, for example. So again, if we take our number of employees in the company and I drag it on, and you see by this case, because it's a numeric item, it actually sets it to being a graph by default. I'm going to look at graphs just now. But um, we're actually going to click on this. And we're going to just click on card, and it now gives me the number of employees. And I can say, great, there's my KPI. And what I could also do is I could drag my so average salary on. Again, I'll make that just a card. And you see, this is great for just giving you KPI type figures. Okay, so we've got a couple of cards over here. Okay, there's the KPIs. Let's have a look at um, something else. Let's say, for example, we do want to do a graph. So over here now, I'm going to take my department. And let's say, for example, I want to know what is the total training cost per each department. So now if I drag the department onto here, by default, we'll get a, a text box, a table. And what we're going to do is we're going to now take our cost and it creates a table by default. I'm not going to say I want you to be a graph. And you can see by default it then creates a graph. And again over here I could do some formatting on this. One of the nice ones is obviously data labels. That always gives us a nice bit of it. You'll see as well titles you can, you can set. On, on the other one, when I just take you through some examples of um, what I've done on that one, you'll see that I've set the titles quite nicely and I've given them backgrounds and, and things like that. So you, you can sort of set them up. But now that we've got just a quick little graph, it shows me my cost by department and um, that's showing me in a column. And normally as well, what we'd love to see is a trend graph. So let's have a look at our trend graph. So again over here we've got a start date and we've got a cost that's been accumulated. So let's have a look at what happens if we say we want to use a line graph to create our trend. And we're going to put it into our axis start date. And you see we'll get a list. And I'll go through this just now and explain what it's doing. And I'm going to put a cost into our values. Okay, now by default what Microsoft has done is that it figures out within a date there's a hierarchy. So we have years, quarter, months and days which are the general type of hierarchy. Now over here you get little drill down controls. So if you click on this drill down over here, you'll see that we move from year to actual quarter. So what it's doing here is actually taking all my year's history and it's actually now showing me what's happening with the quarters. Now to be honest this is great for seasonality. If you want to see how things, uh, your quarters or your months are performing. So again, if I click on this one, you can see now across all the different years how my different months have done. And quite clearly, I don't do too much training in January, February, and July. But the other months, this shows me. Now, unless you're looking at seasonality, you probably would not use this drill down over here. We'll drill back up again. Now, the other option we've got is something called an inline um, hierarchy. So what this does when I click on this one is I now get year and quarter. Click on it again, I get year and month. Now, this may well be the type of graph that you would be looking for. So we have our years and months. Give it a little bit of detail over there. So we've got a year and month over here and uh, that's looking pretty great. Now one of the nicest things about Power BI though is the ability to do something called a cross filter. So over here now I'm going to click on my finance 
and you'll see now that immediately my trend graph will change to finance. You see now it's also showing me I've got 11 employees in finance, and the average salary in finance is 2.72 thousand, and there's my breakdown for finance. So basically, it's filtered everything that is on this board. Now we can change it so that it doesn't uh, always filter everything. You do have these uh, edit interactions options that we can use, but I'm not going to go into those right now. But you'll see over here if we, as we change the different ones, then my graph immediately starts becoming interactive. Now just with a couple of items on your Power BI, you start to find just having these different levels of interaction becoming quite uh, powerful. What we might want to do as well is, for example, we may have something like, uh, say for example, your job grade. If I drag job grade over here, we might be interested to say, well, what happens between, say, admin people or management or operation people in the different departments? And what I can do is I can create this into a slicer. Any of you who have worked with Excel, uh, you'll know that the slicer is great for being able to just again filter your data. So if I click on admin now, it will actually slice uh, this entire option. But I can do management and then also click on finance. Now it's doing a combination between the two and it's showing me the result that I have now three employees in management in finance. That's the average salary. That's a breakdown now by male and female. And you can see that you start creating some quite powerful different types of graphs. Another type of graph, oh, before we actually move on, um, one of the most powerful features as well is when we've got graphs, is we may want to know what is the actual average. So what was the actual average across all these departments? Now, to be honest, before Microsoft uh, put this into Power BI, we used to have a bit of a problem actually getting our averages. You had to do DAX calculations uh, for each average you wanted, which wasn't, uh, which wasn't a huge amount of fun. So in our analytics over here now, sorry, let me click on that. We've got now an analytics. You can see that we've got a constant line, min, max line, average line, median line, percentile line. So if you want to see 25%, 75%. In this case, what I'm just going to show you though is the average line. So in the average line over here now, we're going to add an average line. I'm actually going to just name this. We call it average dash. And we're going to use the cost. Let's make the color black so we can see it. I'm going to put a data label on this. And then the value, we're going to say the name and the value. You'll see over here now that it's actually showing me my average is 57,540. But again, if you were to filter this, you'll see now that your average actually changes. So it's also dynamic. Now a little bit different from my trend line, and sorry, for my, yes, for my trend graph over here, is actually I probably would want a trend line to show on this. So again, with my analytics over here, you'll see that we have trend line constant. So you can have averages on here. But in this case, I'm actually just going to add a trend line. And we'll keep it as trend line. Let me make it a bit of a softer gray. And there's my trend line. So again, as this starts changing, you'll see your trend line is dynamic. So these features of the ability to put averages and different percentiles adds an enormous amount to your, to your different graphs. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just to have a look back here in the page one. Okay, so this is a, an employee dashboard that I uh, worked on a little bit earlier. And uh, again, you'll see a couple of the features that we've seen. So over here we have that job grade, and we've also got years. So if we want to see what happened in 2013, we want to see what's happening with management, you'll see that these filter now my entire dashboard. So one of the things over here we didn't show on the previous one, but is actually the ability to create a pie chart. Pie chart is this visualizer over here. You can actually check, change this to a pie or to a donut, if you prefer the donut chart. And really you'll see that that's the beauty of Power BI. It's very easy to change any sets of actions over here. So again now we see how many people, we've got employees uh, at that level. And we see quite a richness of information here. We've got actually ages over here, and the number of courses that they've attended, the total cost of the courses, as you can see over there, the cost by departments. So quite a lot of rich information that comes across over here. Now, one thing that's uh, quite a new feature, which is uh, quite nice, is this uh, number of employees by age. 
So what you'll see over here is that you've got age bins and we've got salary bins even. So what we said over here was that we wanted to group our age And what we've done is we've broken it down into 10 years at a time. So 20 to 30, we've got three people at the moment. 30 to 40, we've got one person, and so on. And that's because we've got these filters on. So if we take the filters off, we we'll, should see there's a few more people. Let's uh, take those off. Okay, so this would be for our company at the moment. Then the 50 people broken down into the age profiles. But again, what's great about this age options is, again, if I want to see the 30 to 40 people, I can click on this. And you'll now see also then, because we've got the number of employees by salary, this 14 people now is showing me their salaries. And again, I could put an average line on here if I wanted to see the average uh, salary. You can see there's a 50-50 breakup between uh, 30 to 40 in terms of male, female, single and married, a little bit more on the marriage side, how much cost by department. So just using these groupings really gives you a huge richness to the fact of your data analysis. And we can break these up by different groupings, even by salary. So now if we want to see within our salary, what's the total cost that they've done on training, again, what's the breakdown? So I think you get the idea of the different types of um, options that we got for our filtering options. Um, this point, what I just want to quickly show you as well is if we go back to go back to Chrome quickly. Okay, don't want Chrome Help Center. What I'm just going to put in here is Power BI Visual uh, Visual Gallery. So it's talking about those different types of visuals that you can actually add into your Power BI. Okay, so as we page down a little bit over here, you'll see that we've got an infographics designer one. It's actually quite, quite nice. It's a, uh, there's a little example where you've got um, wine production by um, different countries, and then uh, it produces like a little uh, wine bottle for each, each item instead of a column graph. So it's one of those where the infographics is quite nice. And as you can see, there's a thermometer. That's quite a new one. 3D pie charts, different player axis. Okay, that's also a new one. Pyramid 3D charts. So you can start to see there's a quite a richness of different types of visuals and, and these have been added to all the time in terms of what the you can add these into your Power BI. So heat maps, different KPI indicators, histograms as well. One of my favorite ones, uh, especially for HR data, is the box and whisker. Anybody who's used the box and whisker to do a bit of histo histograms, been able to see uh, where your median line is, where your 50% uh, box is, where your 25% 25%. Very, very powerful. So that's the Power BI um, visual gallery. So you can add that. And to basically add that, you just click on here. And you would say import a custom visual. And you choose the file once you've downloaded it. And basically, it would be loaded in here. And then you can add it onto your page, just like any other one. So if we clicked on a tree map, for example, we would just click on your new custom visual, and it would create this, and then you would see the different elements over here that you would uh, be using. Okay, so we've given, I think, a bit of a overview in terms of the Power BI, being able to design the reports, being able to put them together. I just want to back over here the report um, to presentation so over here this was just in case we had a bit of a problem running um, and seeing the ones was talking about the different visualizations the values okay we didn't get to talking about the different filters but we get another level of filters where you can have page level filters report level filters are great if you've got a set of reports that go across many pages but say you've got different countries and you can put the countries into this report level filter, click on the countries, and then obviously across many pages it would change over there. So that's quite a nice feature that's over here. And then we were just talking about the different formatting options. Once you become kind of in, um, 
used to the formatting, quite intuitive, and there's a lot of commonality between the, the formatting features, so you get quite used to the fact of how they actually work, how they're put together. Well, one thing I didn't get a chance to really go into or to talk about was the query editor. So in Power BI, you have the ability to be able to change your, your data. So basically what happens here is before you actually bring in the data into Power BI, you bring it into the query editor. Uh, as I said, this is also called, also called Power Query in, in, in Excel. And you can see over here, I've got my two queries over here, the master and the workshop. And we've got the different fields over here. Now what you'll see over here is you get the ability to filter your data. So say, for example, you don't want to bring all your data into, into Power BI. You have the ability to filter it on um, before it comes in. Also, what you'll see is these little icons. So this is telling me it's a numeric item. This one's a text item. And then we have dates over here. Now, generally with data analysis, especially if you're bringing in data from non-database sources, you can tend to have a problem with the fact of dates and the way that dates are represented. So over here, what it allows you to do is actually to be able to change the different date types and the types that you're using over here. Over here, for example, with age, uh, we have this option over here uh, around add column. And what we can actually do is we can actually get Power BI to calculate the age of people. And they can actually work out as well what year and add new um, fields for you on that. So that's quite a nice feature over there. Now you'll see over here that we have replaced values. And um, these are the applied steps that actually happen. So when I was talking earlier about a macro running, you'll see that uh, it goes to the source, picks up the navigation. Over here we changed the type, so we fixed up a date over here. And then we replaced over here. So marital status said Jen, M for married, and S. And we actually said replace M with married, replace S with single, gender and female, and so on. So over here, this allows us to, to be able to do that. Now, as I said, the data actually has not been actually brought into Power BI at this point. All we're doing is we're creating a set of steps at this point that whenever we do bring in the data, when we click on this Close and Apply button, this set of steps is run. And if you're linking to a live database or to another database source that's been updated, basically, when you come into Power BI, you can just refresh this, and all of these steps will automatically be done and will be able to, to run for you. Okay, so just from pulling together the sort of Power BI side, um, I think hopefully I've, in terms of the time, <laughs> been able to get together showing you how to put the dashboard together, how to use the drag and drop, how to use the different filter options, just giving you a bit of an understanding. Have you really sort of seen how you can sort of take your Excel to the next level? So, yes, Paul, I'm not sure if there's any questions or anything. Um, that's a great presentation. It's really a, a very uh, quick but deep dive into important subjects on data visualization. Um, are there any questions from the audience, participants? We'll wait a few minutes. Okay. I, w I would like to ask how you, if you can or do, compare this tool, in the Power BI tool, to a Tableau or other products in the market. What do you, um, what's your experience, at least if it's not hands-on in, in, in reputation or in terms of flexibility, uh, scalability, uh, usability, those types of things? Uh, excellent, excellent question. Um, uh, Power BI is often uh, compared with ClickView and, um, and Tableau. And my take on it is really, what traditionally happens with Tableau or ClickView is that it gets very low penetration within the organization and, and, and the cost and the licensing cost tends to be quite high. So, you know, if, if you've got your real power users uh, sort of using a Tableau or, or using a ClickView and really getting deep, deep analysis out of it that, that can, you know, that sort of justifies it. But we tend to find, well, not so much with Tableau. Tableau actually does have a, 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 an okay learning curve. You can do a lot with Tableau pretty easily. Um, but ClickView actually does get a bit tough um, quite quickly. So, you know, you start then having to write your own custom formulas. And I think also that's where Tableau tends to, to, to hurt people, is that having to learn a sort of a new formula language. Versus within Power BI, we've, we've got the strength of the Excel um, language and uh, basically also the SQL knowledge. Um, as you go more into Power BI, you're just really seeing how much is the, the SQL sort of basis has been used. So there's, there's a lot of help. There's a lot of ass assistance around. So I normally sort of say to people, um, I kind of see Power BI being used very much at a departmental level, team level. It's really about enablement of um, 
you know, people who are using Excel currently, it's giving them the next the next level of enablement. It, it is certainly not going to be as rich in terms of features as Tableau or, or even ClickView in terms of the, the bigger picture of things. But I really think that you're doing 90 odd percent of the things pretty easily. And and the justification of, of going to Tableau or, or ClickView is, um, you know, it's, it's something the companies would look at. And, and there's no doubt that there is there is value to be had by having Tableau or ClickView within your organization for deep level analysis. Um, but I think it's really more around the enablement of your general business users that Power BI comes to the fore. And also the, the distribution of information, um, just Power BI's internet uh, capabilities um, really, really are strong, whereas Tableau needs its own server infrastructure and that comes at a cost and there's licensing cost and things. I'm not entirely sure how ClickView uh, shares the, the information, but sure, that, that's what I would sort of say is that uh, uh, Power BI is just far easier to, to get going and to get running and to and, and for people to, to move across to, to migrate to. Uh, thanks. Another quick question uh, for me is, is in terms of, and I believe, and I may have just uh, missed this, uh, in terms of a cloud versus our on-premise version with Power yes. BI, uh, what is your experience with that? What's the complexities, if any, involved I mean, at a high level? And what is um, your view of the approach that should be you know, adopted? <laughs> Again, a very good question. Uh, so, so one of the one of the challenges we are with um, with companies that we're working with, and I was actually um, doing some training uh, last last week with a, with a, one of the Ministry of Health um, sort of people, and they obviously have got data you can't really just put it on the cloud. It's it's very uh, you know uh, confidential, and 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 that's that that's a bit of an issue. If you've got very confidential data and things like that. Uh, you know, people, the data governance rules at the moment and things like that don't really allow it to go out onto the cloud at the moment. So, so Microsoft are working really, really hard on that and um, they've got a number of things that they've put into place to, to try and circumvent the fact that uh, of the data actually sitting on the cloud or being on the cloud. So one of those things is that you can do something called a direct query. Um, you can, you can um, as, you, as you're on your dashboard, when you click the button, it's doing a query there and then from the database, so it's actually not storing any data within the cloud. The cloud is basically just being used as a medium to, 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 to visualize the result or to show the result. Um, so definitely using direct query, but the problem with direct query is that we lose the ability to be able to add to our data model. So we don't get the ability to do a whole bunch of calculations and, and formulas that we might want to do. So that's, that's a little bit of, a, of an issue. Um, there is a pyramid analytics version that I believe you can um, publish uh, to Power BI within on-premise to to this, but the cost of that I'm not I'm not sure about. People would have to research that. And then um, Microsoft have also put an, an encryption uh, routeways through Azure into place uh, for companies that want to be able to encrypt their data going up to the cloud, which is certainly an option. Um, but I, I think the Microsoft guys, they, they're very aware of the fact that this is, this is something that you know, they're working on a lot. So I would say, because each company's got different data governance rules and what, what they're going to allow or not, I tend to sort of say, well, you know, use lower risk data, lower risk things, and practice, you know, pilot, prototype, do the research into what Microsoft allows you to do, what is the Azure backend, the gateways, the um, uh, allow you to do versus what your data governance allows you to do, and really just um, you know pilot from that point of view. Very interesting. We have a question from one of the colleagues on the uh, call on the webinar, um, where we, where she would like you to review and where you click to refresh your data source. Can you show that again? Do you mind going back to where you did that, if possible? Okay. Um, so this is this is running just off a couple of. Um, basic, uh, this is actually just using Excel tables as the input, but at the most basic level you just click on the refresh over here to refresh into the Power BI infrastructure, um, so into the Power BI desktop. Um, the edit queries that I showed the input over here, this is where you would set up your links to also to databases and to, to different options like that. And again, this is a refresh option here. But we also, we've got a publish option here, which is your publish onto the cloud. Um, so I don't know if you want me to quickly just show the cloud version. Sure. Okay, I'm sure if I can just get that up and running quickly.
Okay, so we'll just um, see if this loads. Hope so. Ah, there we go, looking good. Okay, so this is this is the cloud side of it. Um, so once you have published up onto the cloud, basically what it does is it, it shows it as a data set. Now normally when you would click on this button, you would kind of expect to see your data like in the Excel spreadsheet. But what it does does is it just shows you the the report option. So if this if you want to create a report here within the cloud version, you would just create it like I did on the desktop version over there. Just a couple of interesting features over here. Uh, the one over here that's uh, that's really quite of interest is the analyze in Excel. So what this does is because uh, Microsoft creates a uh, a SQL um, uh, analysis services data set, basically on Power BI. So you can actually now um, have all your, you you can create one data model, upload it onto the cloud, and then your users can click on this analyze in Excel and then create pivot tables from the actual analysis services data model that has been created. So that that actually works quite well. Another feature over here is your quick insights. If you click on this, what happens is Microsoft uses pattern seeking software and it goes through and it starts looking for patterns or correlations in your data. Now, I've got to be honest, at the moment it's not great, uh, but I think we all know where the AI type of um, technology and everything is going and it's going pretty quickly. So I think we're going to see some, some quite uh, big uh, you know, leaps forward. Of, uh, of the data starting to produce you know, some insights that as humans we probably wouldn't see um, because of the amount of, of, of dimensions and measures we might be looking at. So that's, that's kind of of interest. But then you report over here, uh, if I click on this report, you'll see there's my dashboard being loaded. And, and really to, to, to load this into, uh, you'll see over here I have a dashboard and I have a report. Now if you get the mobile version of this, when you, if you've got a bigger phone or a tablet, the report kind of sits on quite nicely and you can do all of that filtering that I was showing you and click on, uh, you know, I want to see mail, it does everything and it works quite well. And the bigger phones actually work quite well as well. But what you can do is you can also pin uh, these items. If I say pin visual now, I'm just going to create a new dashboard, say so sales, pin that in there. Uh, let's take my trend graph. I'll also pin that one in there. So you pin the different items into your dashboards and then in your dashboards over here, this can also now be, and especially if you've got a smaller scale phone, then you'll say maybe that you would want to see these, these just these visuals by themselves. And so that, that can work. You'll see the sharing over here as well. So I can share this, I can grant access to emails and allow recipients access to these as well. So there's, oh, another feature which is quite interesting, asking a question about my data. So you can actually write sort of English questions about this. Uh, see if this works. What is my salary or sales? Okay, there's my salary for sales. And you could say, um, say by department. And then I can say as a column chart. So within this um, sort of natural question and answer type of situation, you can ask natural language questions over here. So again, this is new technology that uh, Microsoft's working on. Um, you know, it's uh, it's certainly growing uh, very a lot. The functionality, the uh, features are are certainly uh, developing quite a bit. So yeah, so this is basically the. Uh, the cloud-based uh, side of it. This is fantastic. It's very helpful. Uh, we're running out of time. I think there might be one uh, one more question, but let's wait a second. I think uh, someone has posted something. I'm still waiting a second, but uh, very informative. And I think you know none of us are shills for Microsoft here. We're just uh, going through um, a presentation of demonstrating the power of tools as we do in a variety of subject areas. And I think. This is quite interesting. Um, again, I always appreciate um, everyone's feedback and input. And I posted again the link to the feedback uh, from SurveyMonkey. Again, the upside for you, the delegates and the people in the program is to get a free lifetime access to a course. The upside for us is to help Ian and us, you know, see what we did well, what we need to improve and improve, and how we can do this uh, better in the future. So um, looks like uh, that's it for presentation questions. And Ian, we really appreciate your time. We've ended pretty much precisely at uh, noon, one hour.
Thank you very much. Again, yes. all of you will get the copies time. of this, <laughs> links to this. <laughs> um, and we'll send out links to you so you can all uh, get access to this uh, on an ongoing basis. Again, we thank Ian uh, Little John for a phenomenal presentation and uh, for everyone's time. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Paul. Cheers, then. Cheers.